Hello, this is Dr. Tony Clark with learninganesthesia.com, and today we're going to talk about pre-oxygenation. You may wonder why I'm devoting an entire lecture to a simple act of pre-oxygenation, but the reason being is I feel that it is extremely important, and I feel that you will understand its importance more if you understand why we do it. I believe every patient should be adequately pre-oxygenated, no matter what, even if you anticipate it being an easy airway, pre-oxygenation is one of the most important things we do. So number one, why do we do it? Well, first off, we only breathe in 21% oxygen on room air. By breathing in 100%, we remove all the nitrogen which is most of the other component of air that we breathe in. That in turn fills our alve alveoli with 100% oxygen. This leads to number two, the filling of the alveoli with 100% oxygen also increases the oxygen content in other compartments. It increases O2 in our arterial blood. It increases in our venous compartment. And it also increases it throughout the tissues. So why again should we be worried though? Why do we want everything saturated with as much oxygen as possible. Well, that goes on to point number three, and I'm going to explain this in a several series of graphs. The first graph is the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve. If you notice on the graph, the PaO2 is on the x-axis and the percent oxygenation of hemoglobin is on the y-axis. As you move, from a PaO2 from 100 to let's say 70, there is not much change in oxygen saturation. As the PaO2 drops, the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin dramatically drops once you get below a PaO2 of approximately 60. As you see that a PaO2 of 40 correlates with an oxygen saturation of 75%, and a PO2 of 27 correlates with an oxygen saturation of 50%. So there is a dramatic drop once you get below about 90% oxygen saturation. So we want to fill as many compartments as possible so that as time ticks on and we are manipulating the airway, we are staying at a PaO2 of greater than 60 so that we stay away from the steep curve as it declines. The next diagram shows the FaO2 or the fraction of alveolar O2 compared to the oxygen saturation throughout time. And time being apnea time. So in a normal 70 kilogram patient with 21% FaO2, which is here, once they become apneic, there are oxygen saturation will fall to 70% in less than four minutes due to what we discussed earlier with the O2 saturation curve. If the patient is pre-oxygenated to an FaO2 of at least 87%, When their oxygen saturation reaches 
70%, it will almost be 10 minutes of time that has elapsed, giving you plenty of time to manipulate the airway, especially if you're having trouble. Again, emphasizing here, if you do not pre-oxygenate adequately, you're only buying yourself about three minutes of apnea time versus if you pre-oxygenate with FAO2 of 87%, you will buy yourself almost 10 minutes of time in a normal 70 kilogram patient. Now this other curve is very similar to the one we just saw, but it includes other patients that you may be dealing with. The normal patient on the far right, again, will not desaturate for almost 10 minutes if you pre-oxygenate to an FAO2 of 87%. But a moderately ill 70 kilogram patient might only last six minutes, as shown here. Children desaturate much quicker for reasons being we will discuss in our pediatric lectures. But essentially they have a higher minute ventilation and higher oxygen consumption. So they will desaturate to less than 70% in about four minutes. Obese individuals are even worse. A 127 kilogram adult patient will desaturate in less than four minutes, even if adequately pre-oxygenated. So you can imagine if they were not adequately pre-oxygenated, how quick they would desaturate after induction of anesthesia. So now moving on to how do we pre-oxygenate? First off, we need a way to monitor our in-tidal oxygen. Modern anesthesia machines all monitor in-tidal oxygen. Our goal is to have the in-tidal oxygen greater than or equal to 80%. The studies we showed before were all with 87%. But our main goal is to get it at least to 80% before inducing anesthesia. We do this by giving the patient 10 to 15 liters per minute of a sealed face mask with 100% oxygen. How do we know that there is a good seal on the face mask that you're giving? When I mean face mask with a seal, I mean the large anesthesia masks that you place on the patient's face, not the rebreather or non-rebreather face masks. So how do we know that there is an adequate seal with the face mask. There are three ways we can be sure that the face mask has an adequate seal. One is you will see the bag move as the patient breathes. Number two, there will be an appropriate capnography tracing. And number three, as the patient breathes, you will see the rise in your intidal oxygen. All three of these must be met in order to have an adequate seal. 
There are many times where I've seen that patients have not had an adequate seal, but their end tidal oxygen is still very high. Well, that's because there's not an accurate seal. And so the oxygen is just swirling around the mask. So it's reading at 90 or 100% end tidal oxygen. But that's not really the patient's end tidal oxygen. So number one, we have to have an end tidal oxygen monitor, and our goal is to get it to 80%. Number two, we must have a seal. And there are three ways which we can determine we have an accurate seal, and all three must be met. And number three, there are two methods to perform this. One, and the most common one, is that the patient takes tidal volume breaths for three minutes. Or number two, you can have them do the fast track method, which is six vital capacity breaths in 30 seconds. So all the way in, all the way out, six of those breaths in 30 seconds. But which is better? Well, if we look at the study here on the right, you will see the time to desaturation of 90% following fast track versus traditional methods of pre-oxygenation. The fast track desatted to 90% in about 408 seconds compared to the traditional method of 534 in the Gamble paper. In the Valentin paper, the fast track patients desatted in about 212 seconds versus 406 in the traditional. And in the McCarthy paper, they desatted with the fast track method in about 222 seconds versus 324 in the traditional method. So, the traditional method is the best, but if you don't have time, at least do the fast track method to buy yourself some time. Again, always pre-oxygenate. If you need to give the patient just a little bit of sedation to calm them down, to tolerate the mask, that is usually acceptable. Hope you enjoy this lecture.